guy out of the South Carolina camp. Um, one star director, fastly approaching two star director, um, has been the um, top recruiter and the MVP of my organization. Definitely leading a team of champions. And I know she's getting ready to birth her very first director um, who's moments away. So Ms. Jackie Dye, take it away. Thank you, Komet, so much for that. Um, well, one thing that I have learned about being a director, I remember when I first got started um, and I went to convention, I just knew that the awards that we was getting, I thought Planet Marketing, um, you know, give us those awards. I was like, oh, okay, that's nice. They give us a lot of awards. But little did I know that being a director, is, it's a lot of responsibility. It's not just a title. As a director, you'll be responsible for getting those awards. Um, I remember when I got, when I first, when we first became a one-star team, um, Kamet, she texted me and she say, make sure you put some money back because you got to pay for the awards. And I'm like, pay for what awards? She was like, those awards that we give out, we're responsible for those. So just know that it's more than a title. You got to be able to get your awards for the people that's in your organization. The awards are beautiful and they are pricey. So what I normally do now, I start putting, I'm putting money back now because I know in September, I got to come out my pocket to get awards for my, um, you know, for our team. So that's just something I want to share with you as a director, you will be responsible for getting those awards. Um, you know, because your team deserves those. Um, all right, Ms. Tanisha, I'm going to let you have the floor. All right, thank you. And that was great information to share. That was something I didn't know when I joined the business um, and became a director, but you have to reinvest back into your business. You know, you want to be able to recognize awards and recognition is something that helps with retention. Um, it keeps people, helps motivate and inspires people as well. Would any of the other directors like to chime in on that topic about the awards? All right. So next is Tania Anya. No? All right. So then let's go to Tamikia. Great evening. Great evening. I am on. How are you guys? Doing great. So ladies and gentlemen, this is Tamikia Smith, our one star director out of Atlanta, Georgia. Coming yeah. in. If everyone okay. could please mute your line. Mute your line. Thank you. Um, Tamikia Smith is our one star director out of Atlanta, Georgia. This young lady came into the business with no network marketing experience. In about four months, she hit directorship and she has been blazing a trail ever since. So introducing to some, presenting to others, director Tamikia Smith, take it away. Great evening. Thank you for that gracious uh, introduction, Ms. Burke. Uh, hello to each and every one of you guys on the line tonight. So really quick, I'm going to talk to you guys about the topic of not blaming your sponsor for your success, okay? So that is very, very important as we are very proud of each and every one of you guys for making a decision to, you know, hop on board and, and start your own business. But it's important that you understand that if it's to be, it's up to me. And so what that means is we as directors are not responsible for your failures and we're not responsible for your success. Now, I have to be honest, if anybody fails in this business, it is actually going to be you guys that creates that failure because our, our job is to put you in the best position to be successful. So um, you are gonna be the difference between the success and the failure. We're gonna be here to guide you guys every single step of the way. As you see the trainings that you are on tonight, you've been on several webinars and so forth. We have all of the training and the tools that are right at your fingertips, but you are gonna be responsible for, um, you know, making that balance of how you're, you know, plugging in, you know, you're getting on your calls, getting on your morning IMB, showing up like you guys are doing today, and you're doing an awesome job, by the way. So it's just very important that we are making sure that you guys understand that. Now, you should be able to get with your sponsor, get with your upline, or get with your success coach, and, you know, let them know exactly what it is that you are trying to get out of this business, and helping you to understand that whatever you are willing to invest into this business no investment no return right so whatever you guys are willing to invest in this business whatever you're willing to put into this business as leaders as directors we're gonna all play our part but 
in all actuality, we can't work the business for you. We can't want it more for you than you want it for yourselves. And I'll be honest, we have an amazing leadership team on this side. I'm so, you know, I tell people all the time, I think if I had a, you know, join this company with a, on, on another team, just being transparent, I can't really tell you that I would have probably felt like I would have been as successful because, you know, we all come together for the common cause to make sure that we all have each other's back and we have you know exactly what it is that we need overall so but i want you if, if you ever find yourself in a position where you know someone's not answering your three-way calls or you're on their calendar and they didn't pick up and you know so forth i hear it all every day just making sure that you understand that it is going to be your responsibility to start learning your information because i've i've been counseled off of three-way calls before you know sometimes they have forgot um, even me for example my phone has died and i haven't been able to do the three-way calls for my team but if you know your information, guess what? You're not, you can't keep putting that on your directors. You know, I, I can't do this because of them. No, if you learn your presentation or if you learn your information or if you learn how to properly do a three-way call, and the only way to do that, guys, is by doing the three-way calls and listening and not putting your phone down, not putting your phone on mute and walking away, literally taking notes and hearing exactly what it is that we're saying. And then you're going to be able to posture up to be able to host your own calls and own your own presentations and so forth. So um, just make sure that you know, you're know you understanding the Google system, the Google search. If there is something you can't find, I shared this the other day, Google, YouTube, that is your best friend. How did I come into this business running Blazing the Trail with no experience whatsoever? My, my personal sponsor did not have experience whatsoever. We were lost. But guess what? We did not make that as an excuse. Showing up to your events, showing up to your training, showing up to your, you know, your big events and networking. That is going to be very, very huge. Networking with them. So when you do need a help and assistance and questions answered, it is no problem you know, for you to go over there to, to them to, you know, get what you need if you feel like it's good advice. Tanisha, back to you. Thank you so much, Tamika. That, that was great. And guys, you are going to have people in your downline that are blaming you for their lack of success or lack of progress. I promise you it will happen. But here's what I'll tell you. If you are doing what you are supposed to do as a leader, as a sponsor, even right now as a sponsor, as far as onboarding your new business partner, getting the buy-in from them, setting the expectation, doing the orientation with them, coaching, training, developing them. If you are doing all those things, when they do blame you because they still will blame you, you will be able to sleep with a clear conscience at night. Okay. Uh, any of my other directors want to chime in on this topic about not blaming your upline? No, Tamika covered it. She did great. Yeah, she did a great job. All right. Well, let's move on to uh, my better half, Mr. Andrew Burke. Uh, someone, this gentleman here came into the business because I signed him up <laughs> and he wanted absolutely nothing to do with this business. Um, but once I became the evidence of success for him, he saw how this could really help our family and take us to the next level. So I want to introduce to you one star director, Mr. Andrew Burke. Mr. Burke, take it away. Hello, hello, hello. Uh, Mrs. Burke, can you hear me? I can hear you loud and clear. All right. Okay, so um, basically everybody, I'm going to um, talk to you guys about something that you're going to have to deal with once you get to become a director and it's called the director meetings. So um, I want you to picture it like just you come into the business, you know, you prospect, you leverage your leaders and you work your way up and you finally become an official director in Planet Marketing. So as a director in a company, um, Mr. Bradley expects you to become more than just someone who's getting a $500 monthly bonus to director's jacket and overseeing a team of 100. You know, because he's going to open up new doors for you and you'll have access to certain things like um, special calls, uh, luncheons and dinners, and at convention, special meetings. So um, one of these things is called a director's meeting. So keep in mind that uh, Mr. Bradley, you know, he puts together a base meeting during convention uh, for all his planet agents to hear. But then he also has a special meeting after that um, just for his directors. 
And these director meetings here, they're usually at night and they're probably around 10 o'clock and they're geared more towards leadership training and I don't know, like money making strategies, you know? So um, Mr. Bradley, he sees a directorship is just a type of plateau where once you get to a point, it's kind of like he personally comes up to you and he says, well, since you followed my path to here, perhaps you'd like to go further. And he'll sit you down with the other directors and discuss topics that he doesn't discuss with the other 99.5% of Planet Marketing. So um, in these meetings, you're going to get some helpful advice. You know, he's going to teach you how to run your team, uh, look for leadership qualities in your organization and um, build some life-changing income for yourself. So after that meeting is done, it's generally really late. And you know, after it, you're free to go out on the town, hang out in a hotel, you know, go to bed, do whatever you wanna do. And what you're gonna do when you become a director, you're going to see about half the directors leave. But then the other half stays. So before I became a director, um, I was able to sit on these meetings with Tanisha. And when the director meeting was over, you know, I thought we were going to be leaving too, but instead of leaving, you know, she stayed in her seat and, you know, I was like late and as a husband, you know, I stayed too because I didn't know what to expect. You know, I was just in a support mode and she told me that it was time for a meeting after the meeting. And I was like, what the heck is that? You know, so as a director, okay, I want you guys to understand you do not have to stay for this meeting after the meeting. That's your right. Okay. However, there's like this unwritten rule that you need to stay for this meeting because it's going to give you even more knowledge and more tools that you're going to need to go from one director level uh, to the next. Because Mr. Bradley, he kind of gets down to like the meat and potatoes and telling you exactly, and I mean exactly, how to become successful just like he did. You know, he gives you the exact steps that he's followed. You know, he'll tell you about his personal life experiences and he pretty much calls you out and puts you in a spot to become bigger than what you already are. So I want you guys to imagine getting these like nonstop nuggets from a multimillionaire guy at midnight and he just going and going and going until about like two in the morning. So when I first experienced this here, <laughs> remember I wasn't a director. I was a tired husband of a director, you know? It's like so. I sat there listening to this man at one point, and then I'm checking my phone at multiple points throughout all this, you know, and I'm also looking around the room at the other directors, and I saw them all taking notes, and they're listening to his every word, and the participation was just as strong as it was during the first director meeting. Now, I don't know how many of them were tired, uh, just like me, but they kind of looked energized to be getting that inf extra information. So the meeting after the meeting, it's, it's crazy when you think about it because uh, usually during the time it's taking place, it's, it's early morning. And you guys probably already had a busy day at convention because I know I did. It's like you get up around six or seven in the morning, you're going to classes all day, you don't have really all that much time to eat, and you got your team meetings and you got personal meetings with your upline like Greg and Orlando, and then Mr. Bradley's company meeting on top of that, and then all of a sudden, the director's meeting. And then here comes this meeting after the meeting. So by midnight, when this happens, it's like you're running on fumes. But ladies and gentlemen, I mean, you have to do what you have to do to get that info from this man himself, because he's trying to, um, he's trying to like teach you how to become like him. And if you ever tried to get a one-on-one -on -one scenario with him at convention, is practically impossible because he's just way too busy. Now, um, the meeting after meeting, it's not only about getting that extra info, but it's about showing up and you just basically let the company know that you're willing to go above and beyond uh, for yourself, for your team, and for your company. And Mr. Bradley, he sees that and he makes a mental note. So um, I thought I could stop there, but um, one of the things here, when you're in a meeting after the meeting, a um, couple rules here, they're unwritten as well. Don't you dare leave, you know, you call yourself out or he may even call you out and embarrass you, you know. Um, if you go to the bathroom, you better leave your stuff at the chair and come right back because even at two in the morning, you know, this meeting is like more intense than the one before. But eventually it does end and most of the remaining directors pretty much sleep off themselves 
you know, back to their room and they pass out. However, I'm not finished with this because even after this, there's a meeting, after the meeting, after the meeting, it starts immediately afterwards. It's like, we're talking about 2.30, 3 in the morning. I mean, so when you think about with me when I was first there, the only thing I wanted to do was just go to bed with the wife, cuddle up beside her and go to sleep because I was exhausted, you know? But, you know, when it comes to someone like Tanisha Burke, that's not going to work because Tanisha's guaranteed to be one of those remaining 10 or so directors left that'll stay there and be present for that meeting after the meeting after the meeting. So, um, because of this, I think Donald Bradley, he never really goes to sleep. And uh, if he does, it's probably on a plane or something. Because in this meeting, after the meeting, after the meeting, he goes harder than before. And he knows he has your undivided attention and personally drills into you any secret that he's done to get himself into the level where he's at. So he knows that um, if you could stay up and listen to his gospel, until 4 a.m. and that's at the earliest you know he'll see you as a leader within the company and he's going to pour that knowledge that he has into you and in return you know you're going to know him on like a more personal level so um if you want to be a director in this company be fitting of donald bradley's standards that's exactly what it's going to take y'all um, from time to time you're going to have to sacrifice your time and your energy and your sleep at convention to hear the things that he can tell you that he will not tell the rest of the company. So, um, but the huge positive uh, out of this is that you're going to be better positioned for success and you're going to be better qualified. And um, I see a lot of you guys in here already have that drive and ambition already. You know, there's people like Q who he, he reaches out to me and Tanisha and picks our brains on a regular basis, you know. Not because he has a prospect he wants to, uh, he already needs a three-way with. He just wants to talk, wants to hear anything that we have to say to him. You know, I've seen Dawn, you know, she's come over to the house, spent the whole day, and then spent the night with Tanisha, and they stayed up till two in the morning talking about the business. And, you know, I've seen people like Shaheen, you know, and he could take someone like a busy Orlando Moore, sit him down in a chair, and pick his brain for like 10 minutes, you know, and that's what they do with it's like they know that they can do that and they're ex about the meeting after the meeting after the meeting once you get to that point okay guys i thank you for your time on that thank you thank you so much um the meeting after the meeting so whatever you take that five hour energy whatever you need to take uh when you're at an event take it because you do not want to miss those golden nuggets um that happen after the actual meeting takes place and ladies and gentlemen it's not even just at convention even at your uh your weekly meetings once the weekly meeting is over there are a lot of side conversations if your directors are going to lunch and you have the time, definitely go to lunch. There's some nuggets that are dropped over lunch that can help you in your business as well. So next, I want to bring to the room my sister in success. She is a one-star director here out of Space Coast, Florida. Came into the business with zero experience in network marketing in less than... Um, uh, less than a year, she became a one-star director. She is now a two-star director, retired her, herself from corporate America, my best friend, Kamet Turner. Kamet, take it away. Kamet, where are you? Hey, everybody. I'm there. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Go ahead. Okay. All right. Great evening, everybody. Um, and my topic for today is is to talk about um, the meeting after the meetings. Um, we are, as directors, once you become a director, you know on Sunday nights we have the Mr. Scott call at 8 p.m. And then we have the corporate call at 9 p.m. And then the training at 30. Well, it doesn't stop there 
you guys right now are really shut down, right? I call it the um, the, the, the call-a-thon um, that starts at 8 and usually ends around 11. Um, so Mr. Bradley calls, um, has all of his directors poised in position for 10 p.m. So literally right after that corporate call, we have a 10 p.m. call that you will now be required to be on. Um, and then directly after that call, right, he's, you know, he's give, he's uh, telling us what's going on, you know, whatever it is, whatever it is. Um, and it's, the call is usually led by Mr. Cedric White and Mr. Orlando Moore. Um, and most of the times, Mr. Bradley's on. Um, directly after that, when you think, okay, that's it and it's all done, nope, Mr. Orlando Moore, who we all roll up under, he has a call right after. There's no set time. It's just directly as soon as you get off that call, you're on to the next call. So our Sundays are really, really super long because it's call after call after call after call. But that's what's required because they're, tell they're filling us in on what's going on, whatever training as, um, you know, part of the leadership team that's going on. So that's the call portion of it. So let me talk to you about now the meetings. Um, as a director, you are expected to attend the meetings that's in your area and some of the times meetings that's out of your area, right? Um, um, and stuff like that, based on whatever plays they call, which is why you see a lot of us crisscrossing across the nation. Now, here's what a lot of people don't realize is that as a director at any given moment, you may attend a meeting and be asked to present. So you'll need to know how to present, right? Um, and, you, and you never know, right? It could be maybe whoever was scheduled to present now can't because they got stuck in traffic or they're late or whatever. They're not gonna hold up the meeting for that. You're gonna be asked to present. And that has happened um, numerous times for both um, Tanisha and I, you know, when we go, um, uh, as we travel like to the Fort Lauderdale area and they see us and thought, oh my God, can you do the meeting? And then they'll turn to me, can you do the training? Right, just totally not prepared for it, but you must always be prepared. So that's something that, um, that you're gonna need to always be prepared for. Will it always happen? Probably not, but there's the chance that it can, and so you always need to be prepared for that. Um, another thing is the um, once you become a one star, right? That's the first level. So you're a one star, and I wanted to touch on this topic. Um, once you're a one star, that means you and your team have grown your organization to a hundred. Um, it doesn't mean a hundred and you stop, right? You always, always, always must go past. You're not fully comfortable until you get past way past that 100 mark because you don't want to fall into that right that wonderful day that we all love so much which is the 28th right of every month that's when IntelliTravel runs those credit reports um cr credit holds and with the credit holds if you if you are now um let's take i'll use andrew burke as a as an example if if andrew burke is a one-star director on on january uh let's say 30th, he became a one star director on January 30th, um, but then some credit holes or something fell and he's now at 99. So as a one star, you know, you qualify for the director bonus, right? Um, and stuff like that. But here comes January 31st, he's still at 99. He wasn't able to get it back up to 100. Well, guess what happens? On the first, that $500 bonus, he now um, does not get that, right? Um, because he did not qualify to be a director by the end of the month. And that's why you'll see a lot of times when we post, you know, check your credit hold, what's going on. It could be somebody's card that has expired, whatever the case may be. But as you become a director, that's something that you're going to now have to make sure that you maintain and stay well above that and not just at that mark. So the easiest thing is to, is to literally go way past that mark. So you, you never have to be stuck in that position to even think about stuff like that. Um, you know, and, and it's a matter of you um, continuously looking and keeping up with the numbers, checking with the team, seeing, you know, who's doing what, where can you help and stuff like that. Um, so, so those are some of the things um, when we got started in the business, um, we didn't know about at all. Um, it's trial and error that we learned and uh, we figured this would be a great call to let those that who desire and those that are well on their way to becoming directorship, that it's not just all about the blue jacket, the star, and the bonus, right? There's a lot more in detail to it that comes along with it. Um, 
you know, there's, there's that responsibility that comes with it and stuff like that. Um, I, I think I covered everything, Tanisha, um, on what I had for my list. Um, so I'm going to turn it back to you and um, I'll go ahead and do your edification if that's okay. All right. That's fine. Does anybody, any of our other directors want to chime in on uh, what Cam Matt just went over? No? All right. All right. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you again for chiming, uh, for joining in on this amazing, amazing call that the uh, all of our directors put together um, to talk to you about. And now I have the honor and privilege of introducing you to um, the lady that that literally did it for all of us, right? She got me started in the business. Um, and, and for most of you that are direct to her um, as well. So um, without further ado, my sponsor, my best friend, my two-star director, Moments away from becoming a three-star director, director Tanisha Burke. Take it away. Thank you so much, Kamet. So, ladies and gentlemen, I want to talk to you about a couple of topics. Number one, the management trap. <laughs> the management trap. That is once you become a director, um, and you know the, the road to the directorship is about prospecting, right? Finding new business partners, sharing this information with people. But once you hit directorship, you're going to find that your role has changed a little bit, right? There are some things that you've learned that you're feeling like you need to go back. And, and retrain some people or help some people hit their level. And because you're so busy trying to help your new business partners get to bronze, <laughs> I thought it was just my phone, so I was going to go out and come back in. So Question, Tamikia. Yeah. Right, my Wi-Fi went out. Um, but we were talking about the management trap. So, so once you become a director and you're trying to help your team, what ends up happening is you totally stop prospecting. You stop building and recruiting because you're so focused on helping your team get to their next level. And that is the management trap and you do not want to get it caught there because what will end up happening is you'll see that your numbers aren't moving you're not able to get to your, your next level because you're so busy trying to help everyone not helping is to spend 80 20 percent of your time helping the people who want to be helped i'm gonna you want to spend 80 percent of your time recruiting and prospecting and 20 percent of your time helping the people who want to be helped not everybody has a doc a desire to be a top income earner so you can't reach out to that person who's been in your organization for six months, they're booking travel, and then you're trying to spend time with them, trying to turn them into a, a network marketer, trying to help them get to director. That may not be their goal. Understand, 85% of your team has a desire to only make $500 to $1,000. That's their goal. That's it. They don't have a desire to become a director. They don't have a desire to make the big money. So you can't take people who do not have that desire and try to make them into something that they're not, okay? 15% of the people on your team have a desire to make $2,000 to $5,000 a month. They're not gonna go past that. So there's gonna be people on your team who once they hit one star director, they're not interested in hitting two. They good. So you can't take them and try to push them to be a top income earner. That's just not their desire. So be careful of the management trap. You do not want to um, stop recruiting and stop prospecting. You still want to help your people, but help the people who want to be helped. They need to raise their hand and, and you need to set that expectation when you're um, onboarding your new business partner, let them know, hey, I'm going to show you all the tools and resources that you need to be successful to achieve the goals that you've shared with me. 
but it's up to you to utilize those tools and resources. And if you have a question or you're, un or you're um, unsure about something, raise your hand and I'm gonna come back and coach, train and develop you on whatever area you need, you need help in. But outside of that, I have other people that I'm helping and I'm also building my, my organization as well, building my business, okay? So that is the management trap. Do not get stuck in the management trap. And the last topic that I wanted to talk about is you may not like your business partner, but that should not interfere with you doing business. I'll repeat that. You may not like your business partner, but that should not interfere with you doing business. This is business. This is not a social club, although we have developed a lot of you know, close relationships. This is business, and you have to take your emotions out of business. If you find yourself saying, I feel this, I feel that, you're getting emotional. You're getting emotional, and you will find yourself so busy dealing with people's emotions that you're not doing business. You don't have to like everybody. There are going to be people in your downline that you bump heads with hard. <laughs> I've experienced this. All of the directors on the line have experienced this. But guess what? You have to be able to still make the money with them. And never feel like, you know, just because, you know, you're bumping heads with your upline or your, your business partners may feel like they're bumping heads with you. You don't want them to ever, you know, sometimes they're going to feel like, oh, they're after me, my director doesn't like me, my director you know, wants to see me fail. That is so far from the truth. I want you to always ask yourself this. Why would they want to see me fail if they're financially tied to me? Right? Why would we as directors do anything to hurt you knowing that it's going to hurt us financially? We wouldn't do that. So I don't want you to ever think that because you don't get along with someone that they're out to get you or that they, they want to hurt you. It's not. It's just that sometimes there is a personality um, conflict and lack of communication. So you have to learn how to communicate, especially with the people that you appear to be bumping heads with. And you don't want to start... You know, if there is an issue that you have or that your downline has with you or you have an issue with your downline, you need to pull them to the side and have an adult conversation. Hash it out so that you can get back to making money. You have to stay out of your feelings. You cannot be in your money zone if you are in your um, bump head with you know a couple of directors a very strong personality just like I do matter of fact let me be clear if you are a director you're a red <laughs> right reds typically are directors um, or I guess they could be other colors but they probably dominate in the red field they may have started off a yellow but they learn to become a red and that's how they hit the, the directorship. So sometimes even us reds will, will bump heads, right? Sometimes me and Camette don't always agree on everything, but we don't let that interfere with our ability to make this money. We don't let that interfere with our ability to help our team or to collaborate or to you know share information. We do what we have to do for the big team. So I promise you, as a director, you are going to have people in your downline that either don't like you, don't respect you, blame you for everything, whatever the case may be, but always maintain your professionalism, communicate with them and let them know, you know, we may not agree or whatever, but I have a vested interest in your success. We don't have to like each other, but let's lock arms and let's build this business and get this money because I want to see you win for your family. And if you do that, they're going to respect you. They may not like you, but they will respect you. Would any of my directors like to share um, or chime in on that topic? 
Just for the record, so everybody knows, Tanisha and I almost never agree on anything. Um, but we literally go go back and forth. At, and I know a lot of you probably think, oh, they get along and they agree with everything because they're best friends. No, we actually don't. It's literally right conversation where we go back and forth and then we come to a mutual whatever and then we're like, okay, we're good, we're good. Okay, good. That's right. Because at the end of the day, it's not about um, it's not about feelings, right? You, um, there's no money there, so you got to get out of your feelings, just like she said. Um, it's about business, and this is a business, so we keep we keep it business all day, all night. When we're done with our business, then we can talk about anything else thereafter. But overview of of what you were talking about, Tanisha, um, as as far as um, you know, be being able to not um you know get it get into your feelings and stuff like that because that is very huge we're, we're all human we all have different personalities um and and just like she says we're always not going to agree but we get to voice each other's opinion and we sit and we talk about it and stuff like that and it doesn't mean oh well you know she's out to get me and so forth and so on, because that's not what it's about at the end of the day tanisha does not sign my checks and i don't sign hers right? It's all about making your money. So if you get in your feelings and you say, well, I'm just not going to do anything and I'm not going to recruit and I'm not going to build this business. Who are you hurting? You're hurting your own self. You ain't hurting me. I'm still going to get paid at the any way I look at it. Right? So you're only hurting your own self um, by not doing that. The thing about it is um, if you, um, if you blame this, that, and the other, um, be be the director, be the leader that you wish you had, right? Go out and do what you need to do, um, right? And figure out and be like, look, I got this or whatever the case may be, I can do this. And that's literally what we what, what we all did, right? I'm like, you know, we're going to do this. We're going to build this business. We're all one big happy family. Well, we're not always happy, but we're all big one family. We all started as strangers. And that's what it's all about. It's all about the unity and being able to help each other as we we climb this ladder because guess what guys we are all going to win together we ain't leaving nobody behind and i know i've told those that are direct to me the same thing i'm not leaving y'all behind right there is way too crowded at the bottom i need everybody up top so um i know one of the questions um i, I saw in here somebody wanted to know when did when did each director, how long did it take each, each director to become a director? Um, and I'll, I'll say on mine, and I, uh, Teresa asked that question. Mm -hmm. um, I started the business June 7th of 2016, and I had no interest whatsoever in the marketing side. It was just on the travel side, and it wasn't until I went to convention the end of October or the beginning of October that I saw the um, what it really was and how much money could be made in this industry that I really even started on the marketing side. Um, so for me, I, I, I got started in June, but I didn't do anything until October. Um, and then I became a director that following June. So probably about um, nine, 10 months um, of really working, working the business and stuff like that. Um, and I know I'm not sure if Tamika is still on or not. She could tell, I, um, she could tell how long it took for her. I know hers was really quick. Tamika, are you still there? Oh, I'm here. I was on mute. I'm sorry. It it okay. took me uh, it took me four months. They were the hardest months of my life, though. <laughs> that it sounds easy. It was not. Trust me, it was not. When I seen that today, um, in Kemet's chat about birthing a baby, I just like had those heartaches all over again. That was the hardest labor ever. <laughs> four months. Awesome. Awesome. It That's very true, you guys. It's not it's not easy but it's definitely well worth it oh and yeah when you come down to right you hear us talking about birthing a baby we were te teasing Thelma that she's a breach and and we were going to c-section her and all <laughs> sorts of madness but um it's not easy but it's worth it but when you come down to that 10 yard line oh my goodness your heart's going to be palpitating you're, you're going to feel like you just want to like explode right because it's just the grit and the grind and um but you got to push through no matter what because you're that close that you can't you can't get your foot off that gas pedal 
um, back to you, Tanisha, to um, share your um, how long it took you and how long it took Andy. Yes. Yeah, so I started the business in June of 2016, um, and, and I hit directorship in eight months. And so, Andy. Okay. Um, <laughs> okay. So Tanisha purchased my business. In November of 2016, and I did not care about even really start working until I developed a plan for it until maybe I don't know, like August, August of 2017, and it took me a whole year to August 2018 to become a director. Thank you. All right, awesome, awesome. So it is 8:43. We have uh, a, about 20 minutes. I want to entertain your questions. Um, I, we've shared all of the topics that we wanted to cover with all of you, but what questions do you have for us? I want you to uh, feel free to unmute your line, state your name, um, and how long you've been in the business, and what your question is. Or you can write it in the chat. Hi. Hi. Hey, Constance. Hey, Tanisha. Hi, Andy. How you doing? Hey, Constance. Hi. Okay, I have a question. 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 Okay. When? What do you got? How? Okay. What did you guys do when it got to a point where it's like just a lot? As far as like you know, you're trying to build and you're trying to work with your travel business, but you really want. To Build and you just get discouraged, and it's like, oh, I want to do it, but it's going to be a little bit too much. I don't want to back off, but I want to do this. Good How question. Do um, so, when you are going for a directorship, my opinion and and you know some of the other directors may are on the hunt for directorship and you are all in there's no time to work the travel business there's no time to be doing quotes and stuff like that because it requires every ounce of your being it requires total focus it requires you know you're in the bathroom and you're you know prospecting trying to get you know get people on and exposed in you know you're at you might be on your nine to five are in the hunt for directorship there is no time there's no time to go to the movies to watch tv i'm pretty sure most of the directors will tell you and and i want each of them this was a great question by the way to chime. there was no way i could do anything but focus on getting to directorship. You, there, there just wasn't. Your, your life is totally unbalanced when you are 100% serious about hitting directorship. Other directors, would you please chime Absolutely. in on that one? Great Absolutely. question. Absolutely, um, and Constance, it's a matter of it's complete blackout mode. Like there's, there's nobody in the world that exists but you at that point in the moment. When you are that close, and you are um, um, on your way to directorship, and you are that close, every and anything becomes obsolete, right? You have to stay fully focused. There's going to be, there. I mean, there was times, um, you, you know, coming into the, the, the uh, uh, you know, I think I was like eight away or, so, or, so, or something like that, and it was a matter of who has time to eat. It was literally in between calls, um, while the person's talking, muting, just trying to take a bite off my sandwich, that type of thing, right? Um, so it, it's literally just focused because you want to get there. And I'm going to give you guys the example of what happened to a director when she was 12 away from becoming a director in the company. And it was the last day of the month. It was a, it was a February because it was a short month. And she did not, she was not able to close off those 12. 12 away is super, super, super close, right? I mean, you, by any means, you got to make that happen, right? Pull in your team, teamwork, whatever, who, you know, whomever at that point in time. She didn't make it. The clock struck 12. She missed the opportunity. 
It was now March 1st. Do you know that being only 12 away, that it took her until September before she hit director and she was only 12 away? Because then it started rolling back like the, like, like the Walmart rollback. Roll she, went, she literally went from being only 12 away to hitting directorship, her next pin level, to now people starting to, to whatever. And then she had to rebuild, literally rebuild. And you don't want to get that. It's easier when you cross that line and then try to, you know, keep going forward because then you've got that 30 days to work with you and your team to get past. And that's what I was talking about is getting past that, right? That 100, you got to turn the corner. It's clap, clap, celebrate. Let's pin you with the star. Let's get you the blue jacket. Everybody's congratulating you. But it, as Mr. Moore says, clap, clap next, right? Got to, you got to keep going. You got to keep going forward. And it has to be for those that are driven to do that because you, the last thing you want is for you to work so hard for you and your team of champions to get to that one star level. And now you guys are a one star team. And then for you to fall back and not reap the benefits that are attached to it. You know what I mean? No, we're not going to take the jacket back. No, we're not going to take the star back, but then you're not getting that monetary thing, which is what your actual goal is to get there. Right. Did that make sense? Absolutely. Go ahead, Tamika. Tamika. Well, Matt, excuse me, can Matt really sum it up? Um, and I laughed as I was, you know, hearing her talk about it because the rollback happened to me. I remember like it was yesterday. Um, I remember Greg calling me and he was saying, you know, it was two away. I mean, that morning, I think I may have been eight away on, on Sunday morning. Um, I'm sorry, Saturday morning, I was getting ready to go to a 50th birthday party with my husband. So I've got to tell you, especially if you are in a relationship, it is extra hard trying to go that right there because you are not spending enough time with them. You know, you're not catering to your husband, to your wife. I don't even know if my kids took a bath for the most part because my husband was like in full control. It was like crazy. I didn't pay anybody any attention, but I can recall this day like it was yesterday. Um, we were supposed to be at a 50th birthday party, which was a surprise party. And my goal was to finish it that day. It was the hardest thing in the world. But I remember, you know, keep being told, like Kemet was saying, I had to literally finish it by a certain time or I wouldn't have, <clears throat> I wouldn't have been able to get my director bonus as well. So I, I think um, I remember literally being three away and study getting the calls back and forth from Mr. Scott. I got one reactivated, y'all. I'm two away. And that was the hardest two to ever get. I got down to one. And then Tanisha called. And um, I remember Tanisha saying, do you know you got another credit hole? I'm like, are you kidding me? Are you out of your mind? So literally trying to, you know, get that going. Never since I've been in the business has Planet Marketing ran payments at 1130 <laughs> at night and so forth. I, they've never done that. But however, for this particular night, they did. Normally those payments run three in the morning. The first time they got me coming in on the 28th, guys, I almost lost my mind. But I can honestly tell you when it was over, finally when it was over, I looked up and I seen the banner, Cam Met posted the banner. I have to tell you that you know, everything that, you know, we went through at that moment all, you know, came into a reality where it was all worth it. Because at the end of the day, um, especially as me having children, my fear was, you know, every night going to bed, I wanted to make sure that if something happened to me where I didn't wake up in my sleep, that I had that legacy. So, you know, some people ask me this question all as fast as you did. And that was honestly um, a, a fear of mine. When I seen that legacy, guys, I didn't see anything else in the business. A lot of you guys see the travel. A lot of you guys may see the money. I didn't see any of that. I have a concern to make sure that my children were taken care of. And I know they have a great father, but I know he's not going to be able to do the things that I'm going to be able to do. Um, I put myself in a position wondering about income. You know, could he take care of the household without his income. If something happened to, to him, could I take care of the household? I didn't want to have to move and lose my house because his income wasn't there. So really guys, I seen the legacy. So honestly, if you guys see the legacy, don't see the jacket, don't see the star, don't see the, you know, the word director, see the legacy that you're going to be able to leave to your family, your children, your husband, your wife, your mom, your dad, whomever. And, and if you literally see that focus and understand what that planet pledge can do for you, then you will We'll run through the tape. Back to you. Thank you. Thank you. Did you want to chime in on that one? No. Okay. Um, both Kamet and Tamika <laughs> said everything. All right.
Awesome. That was a great question, CJ. Thank you. Anyone else have a question? Going once. Going twice. I don't see any other I got questions. a question. I, got, I have a question for the two-star directors. Let me ask the two-star directors a question. <laughs> okay. Oh, boy. What? <laughs> as you know, I'm trying to run through the tape as well, y'all. Give me some help. Well, no, just joking. What, um, what advice do you have for, for, for us, um, for us one-stars that are trying to go two-stars, you know, right now? What, what advice do you guys give? So my biggest advice, um, and this is something that, we kind of learn as we went along from the moment from when you get to DIT let me be clear about this starting at that level when you get to DIT the 50 people that got you to DIT are not the same 50 people that will carry you to 100 so if you're sitting at DIT and you're counting on your team to push you not going to happen you have to prospect new people once you hit 100, those 100 are not the same 100 that are going to take you to 300. They're not. So you have to keep prospecting new people to take you to 300. When you hit 300, those 300 are not going to carry you to 500. So my advice to you is to remember the 80-20 rule. Spend 80% of your time prospecting and then 20% of the time helping those on your team that want help. Kemet? Excellent, excellent. That was excellent. So my advice um, is to, um, which is one of the things that, that you're doing, um, Tamika, is you got to go wide. And just like Tanisha said, um, who's on your team now is not going to help you to get to your next level. And let me explain that further. Um, the thing about it is, right, every level requires a certain amount. And once you are maxed on that level, then you can't pull anything else from that. And, and I'll give the example. So the example is even though, um, so I'll take Tanisha's, Tanisha and her team, it's overall team, right? She has a team of 800 plus, right? Um, however, she's still at the two star. And why? Because her legs that she has running has maxed out. Um, so I'm one of her legs, right? I'm, I'm one of the legs that's running for her, but um, she's, uh, she's maxed out on getting anything else from me to help her to get to her next level. So as going into three-star, it means that every leg can give you 167, right? So I'm already maxed out on that. Hell, I'm even maxed out on her four-star. I'm actually working on whatever for her, her five-star. So she can't pull anything from me and anybody that's attached to me, right? And so that's one of the things that you want to focus on is who's in your team, who's in your downline, are they maxed on your leg? If, and, and if they are, that's great. You definitely still want to work with them to help push them to their next level, but know that you now have to find another leg of business. Right. And one of the things that, um, that I can share with those of you that are married and have your spouse attached. Um, I had this conversation with, with, uh, with Jackie Dye. One of the things is if you have your spouse um, as, your, as your leg running for you, right, which a lot of you did, right, it's you and your spouse, and if you have runners in that leg and that leg maxes out because this is what happened with one of our directors under Mr. Moore's camp. She put all of the runners under his leg now she is maxed on that leg and now she's struggling to get to her next level, right? So don't do, and, and do you know who's going to be a runner? No, you don't know, but you got to, you got to, um, you, you know, so if Tanisha's signing somebody up under her, then maybe she'll do one under Andy, vice versa. If Tamika signed up under her, then one under Anthony, so forth and so on. But don't put it all there because you're going to need those legs of businesses, mm -hmm. right? It all sounds good and you want that extra income that's coming in, but it's always not beneficial. And that's the right. That's one of the conversations that I have with Jack. I said you got to go wider because you have that under for your husband. What happens when that maxes out? Then what do you do? Right? You need additional legs that's running. Um, and and that's the best advice that I could give to you is definitely go wide, and um, you know utilize that. Um, and you guys all know one of uh, one of my favorite 
things, both getting to one star and two star for me is I literally went back through the tape of those that I reached out to from the very beginning of getting started in this business. And I've always still done that. I do it every couple of months, right? Because at one point they were interested in the business. So I'm going to reach back out to them, whether it's um, they didn't answer when I called, whether it's, um, you know, they didn't, they couldn't do it at that time, whatever the case may be, it's staying consistent. And if you guys are running that play that's been called that peak interest or the ones that Tamikia put in the, in the, in the team Lux platinum and stuff like that, of, as far as what to do and stuff like that, that's what you got to do to be able to get to your next level. And it's a continuous thing. And again, is it easy? No, it is not. Um, it's, it's super hard. Um, but is it worth it? Absolutely. Would I do it all over again? Hell yeah. Right. At the end of the day. And that's, that's what I have to say on that. Um, to me, give that answer to your question. That was good. Yes, thank you. That was good stuff. Good stuff. So guys stay plugged in duplication, right? Use the team Lux, plug your team into team Lux platinum. Um, the group because the directors have come together. We're calling plays. We're sharing training videos. If you are plugged into the Team Lux group and you see all the posts and you're engaged, that is where the duplication is going to happen. If your team is running the follow up Friday, every Friday, duplication. If your team is running the plays that we're calling at the beginning of the week and participating in a contest, that's duplication. If they can just keep doing that over and over again, they're going to hit their pin levels. Um, I posted today how many people are still running the just ask peak interest. And there are a lot of you that are still running it. And why are you still running it? Because you're seeing results, right? Because you're getting those three way calls because people are signing up. It's the simplest thing. Um, and you just want to do the simple things as Mr. Moore always says, doing the simple things consistently. Stay consistent in your business. Um, uh, and last but not least, um, I want to just say thank you to all of you. I think at one point we had 55 people that were on this call, which is amazing. So I, I'm excited when all 50 of you actually hit directorship. Um, the road to the directorship is hard. But as we all said, it is absolutely worth it. So um, just post in the comments, did you guys find this helpful? I want to know if you found that this meeting was helpful. Go ahead and post in the comments. Martina said yes. Maria said yes. Goddess says yep. Louise, ooh, you guys are going so fast. Thank you, everyone. Very helpful, extremely helpful. Absolutely. Thank you, yes. Running the play has made a big difference for me. And yes, that was coming from Gina. Great. Uh, Shaheen said, so needed. Thank you, Sha. Thank you all so much. 100%. Very helpful. Yes, technical information that I needed to know, but would never think of to ask. Thank you, Gwina. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So I hope to see you all on our training next week. On Monday, we'll have another amazing topic. Again, if you guys have any specific topics that you ever want us to cover on our Monday night trainings, just uh, send them to your directors, send them to me, let me know, and uh, we will also get that covered. But thank you all. I'm gonna run back to my computer now and end this webinar. Have a great night and uh, see you at the top. Oh, and thank you to all my directors. Love you guys. Yeah, I was just about to tell you a, a piece of my mind. <laughs> thank you guys. I couldn't do it without you. I love you all. <laughs> Bye.